In this episode, I take apart a grubby carburetor. That is not a nice smell. Desperate measures are used to remove ruined JIS bolts. Me and Sophie build a new wiring loom from scratch. And I test out my new LED speedo bulbs. I just stared directly into it and now I'm blind. Hello and welcome to another episode. A um, little bit different the plan um, I had for the Honda has changed a little bit. Uh, the idea was to get through restoring it, get it on the road and then do some videos on doing the electrics and then doing the uh, the engine bits and, and different kind of categories like that. As with any restoration, it's taken me a lot longer than I intended. Um, and then Christmas has come round, everyone's pretty busy, got a few bits on order as well. Got some uh, parts coming from various parts of the world, a new front sprocket coming from Australia because you can't get them over here anymore. So we're waiting on a few things as well. So in the interest of time, I'm going to do a few videos uh, one by one, including this one. We'll see how we're going, but uh, let's get on with it and let's see what we've been doing with the Honda anyway. Okay, so here's the carb for the CT90. As you can see, it's all a bit old and gummed up looking and it's got the throttle cable attached so it's better get this thing apart first and then we can work out what we can do with it ah if i can even get the thing apart wow let's see the slide that is that on a, oh, that feels a bit stiff. okay it slides out that's definitely got a bit of a harsh edge on that slide there oh there we go oh dear bloody stinks good god that is not a nice smell. Put it in this uh, mug of carb cleaner just to let it sit there for a bit and soak. And it first thing that happened, it started fizzing. Since this point, it's become apparent that not only is it very hard to get service kits for this particular model of carb, it's also really easy to get Chinese knockoffs on eBay. So I bought one of those and we'll try that out first. The next step is to do a compression test to see how the engine is looking. Right, so this engine um, apparently from the previous owner it was burning oil, but then given the state of the throttle cable and the carb I'm not honestly sure if they've had it running But it certainly wouldn't hurt to do a compression test A few things we can try then if the compression is quite low We can test a few different ideas. So if the compression is low, but the um, Compression gets higher when we put a bit of oil down the bowel that would indicate that the piston rings might be a bit duff this pipe's rated up to 300 psi. Pretty sure we're not going to hit that. Okay, well, we've got 25. Okay, cold engine showing 110 psi. I don't think that's too bad. Might go with that. With the compression looking good, the next thing I want to do is to replace the wiring to the generator because it's all frayed and pretty horrible. At this point, I encountered lots of JAS bolts whose heads have been rounded off by Phillips head screwdrivers. Drastic measures were needed to get some of the heads off, and then I'll go around and replace them all with Allen key bolts instead. Got the little bastard. Ha! That took a lot. So I broke, actually, you managed to break a couple of uh, flat head bits. Right, so here is our high low gearbox mechanism. Uh, I'll take this, the cover off here. Let me take this cover off and uh, get at the, the generator and then see if this wiring up here can be uh, somewhat replaced. Gotcha. As you can see, the front sprocket here is quite worn, looks a bit like a shark fin, but I have a new one of these on the way from Australia. Again, I'll uh, replace these like for like with some um, Allen key head screws. You can get stainless, but they're quite soft. And also stainless, when you screw into aluminium, can uh, bind to it if you don't put enough grease on. But then if you put grease on, you have to put a lot more, you end up putting a lot more torque in. Um, and you talk, if you use a torque meter, the readings are just all over the place if you, if you use grease. So uh, for the sake of ease more than anything, I'm not going to bother with that. Pull this out. Back to that James Bond thing again with the magnet. Right, so here's the stator. Inside looks alright, there's no big 
gouges or cracks or anything obvious wrong with it. It probably works all right, except it can't work because look at the wires there, it's not plugged in. Um, so the state of these wires here have absolutely had it. This isn't, I haven't ripped anything of these things off. That's how they were. Fortunately, I found a pretty good condition one on eBay, marked for a C90, but I'm pretty sure it'll fit. So I thought I'll have a go at that. Uh, check that it all fits right. Next step was to check the continuity to make sure all the wiring is good, and then we can try it. With the continuity checked and some new terminals crimped on, it's looking pretty good. Behold! I knew it would happen. I dropped all of my little crimping connectors on the floor. I just caught the thing. Nobody does it better. The next step was to replace the wiring loom. The old one has been sat in the sun for many, many years. And even though you can get them fairly easy for the later CT90s, this particular model is very hard to get. Starting from a wiring diagram, we tried to match up the old bleach wires with the colours they're supposed to be, replace those light for light with new by simply lying out the new wires, measuring to the right length, and then bunting them up all together, before adding some terminals onto the end to make a light for light wiring loom. It wasn't too bad of a job really, quite a simple task. The trick is just making sure that when you have different wires that branch off to go to ignition switches, light switches and so on, you're just quite careful with how you measure. Is it measure twice, cut once or the other way around? I can never remember. The next thing is to replace the ancient rectifier with a more modern solid state unit. Right, so what I've got now is a solid state rectifier, equivalent of those weird parallel plates we've taken off. This is a much more modern solution really. It's rated up to some, I can't remember how many now, it's rated to some huge current, way more than would ever go through this. So it's gonna be absolutely fine. But just on the safe side, we do have this kind of heat sink type plate to put it on here. And um, just to be extra careful, I've got some uh, thermally conductive grease, the sort of thing you'd use if you're putting a new CPU onto a gaming PC or something like that. I'll put some of this in between the rectifier and the heatsink. So we know then if it does get a bit warm, it should dissipate nicely into the metal. Should smush onto there nicely. And away we go. Great. Next, I replace the old bulbs in my Speedo with some LEDs. Um, it's the oldest uh, version of this Speedo. It's used on the early CT90 and the CT200. It's missing the red lens there, that fell off. See, but what I really want to do is replace these bulbs at the back here with some LED versions that'll be brighter, use less power, and uh, realistically, there should never be any need to replace it, so that's good. All right, so here are my little bulbs. I'll bring one closer. There's a weird, you see that kind of pancake shape on the end there. I might have to file that plastic off a little bit. Yeah, you see where it's been soldered at the side there for focus. It just gets a tiny bit wider towards the top. It doesn't want to push far enough in. Right, so it's in. What I have to do, the uh, the solder joins at the top were just a bit too wide to go in. I just have to gently file them away. Right, so I better test this. So now I've got my uh, six volt battery. This is what's gonna go into the Honda. A makeshift harness I've got that just clips onto the terminals. Uh, pushes on down here to a uh, normal Honda style bullet connector and now in theory when I connect this up here hey we have light I just stared directly into it and now I'm blind but it works that's brilliant right let's put it in all I've got to do now is uh, that disc of plastic at the top where the, uh, the actual bulb itself is soldered onto it's a bit wide a bit of excess plastic so I've just sort of taken a file and uh, carefully taken a tiny bit off all the way around so after a bit more fiddling, we now have, I'm pleased to announce, working neutral light, working backlight, and then finally, we also have high beam. Hey, hey, how about that? With Christmas just around the corner, it's time for me to put down the tools, drink Baileys, and play Boney M on loop. Can I refill your eggnog for you? Get you something to eat? Drive you out to the middle of nowhere? Leave you for dead? No, I'm doing just fine, Clark. The question remains, will I actually be able to get back to my parents for Christmas? 
it's almost Christmas. And also, as it happens, the COVID numbers are high. Sophie, our partner, has it at the moment. Well, I, I don't know what to say, except it's Christmas and we're all in misery. Somehow I'm still testing negative. We'll see how that goes. So there's potential that me and Sophie might be stuck here uh, on our own over Christmas and not able to see family, depending on COVID tests and isolation and so on. So that's a bit shit, but it could be worse. Apparently Chris Rear's car failed its MOT. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of people in this situation. I think there's, you know, it's gonna be a bit naff, I think, but um, Boris Johnson promised this year will be better than last year. Um, maybe we could sue him or at least put a brick through his window or something, I don't know. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you celebrate Christmas, have a great Christmas. If not, have a great winter or whatever you call it, uh, or summer if you're in that hemisphere, wherever you're coming from, have a great time. Do uh, stay safe as you can, obviously watch out for that, uh, that old COVID business. Um, and I'll keep coming back to you with some uh, more progress on the Honda and the Boltaco and but some more adventures on the BMW and uh, various different bits like that. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you very much. Cheerio.